It is absolutely critical to understand what's happening in China right now to understand the whole economy. And this is really integral because of how globalization has brought every country together. The first thing I need to talk about is China's manufacturing and how things have changed. One little hint here is Apple is at the center of this. The second thing is China's lockdown and the response to that. So I will give you the breakdown there. And the third thing is the exports, not just with China, but with other countries as well, like Bangladesh, and what's happening with the signals of a weakening global economy, all of that and more. Let's begin. The first thing I wanted to look at is this article here out of Bloomberg that's basically breaking down what we have seen with stocks in China. Tencent and Alibaba are having their best month in a long time with their shares surging by double digits several times in November on newfound investor optimism about China's economy. What are they saying here? All right, they're going to go away from the lockdowns. They're going to stop with the whole strict lockdown policy. They're going to open up. They're going to make sure that the stimulus happens. They are going to ease the tensions for everybody. But that didn't happen. In fact, millions and millions of people inside China right now are under lockdown. Hundreds of millions of people, in fact. And I showed you the data in a previous video confirming this. So it's more about optimism that things will change, but we haven't gotten there yet. And that's so important to understand because this is all based on hope. Hope that things will get better, but certainly have not. So that's what I want to share initially here. Let's look at the next aspect. Apple's reliance on China grows perilous with chaos in iPhone City. So one of the manufacturers, Foxconn, does a lot here in one of those things that they had been recently in a little bit in trouble for it seems is that it looks like they were beating the hell out of their employees at least that that's what we can see i wasn't there i don't know but you see a whole bunch of these guys in the hazmat suits and they were pounding down on a lot of the individuals out there we don't know what the situation is but we've seen this many times before they're saying the lockdown restrictions are too harsh, thing, bad things are happening, and the revolt happened. This is the result of years and years of all of this really building up like a tea kettle, right? Apple prepares to get made in US chips in pivot from Asia. Company plans to source chips from Arizona plant in 2024. This is massive. This is huge. However, it's only going to be a percentage of the total. We know that to be the case, but it's still big. It still shows that the biggest company in the world wants to make sure that they don't have the same problems as they did previously with the supply chain. They cannot risk that again because that affected their bottom line. And so they want to make sure that they can get things built outside of China. Beijing on edge as city adds new quarantine centers. This is what's happening here. They're still under lockdown. This is still occurring. And so, as a result, you can't get stuff made at this time. If these cities are under lockdown, it, you know, depending on the, on the severity of the lockdown, if they are unable to leave their homes, that's one factor. Or maybe this just you know, enhanced testing and it kind of slows things down. It all depends. But you can see that a company like Apple is going to say, look, how long can we do this for? We're, we're, you know, we got to move these products out there. It does happen to come at a time in which there's less demand overall for products. But that's a different story. Residents of some parts of China's capital were emptying supermarket shelves and overwhelming delivery apps on Friday as the city's government ordered faster construction of quarantine centers and field hospitals. Uncertainty and scattered unconfirmed reports of lockdowns in at least some of Beijing's districts have fueled demand for food and other supplies, something not seen in the city for months. And so basically, they're 
you know, really going a little bit chaotic at this time. They're emptying the shelves. They don't, they don't know what's going to happen because they could be left without food, without basic supplies uh, as a result of these lockdowns. So you've got millions of people right now, like I said, hundreds of millions, based on the number I had seen in a previous article, hundreds of millions of people under lockdown right now in China to some degree. Depends on the degree of that. But like I said, this is impacting the bottom line of not just the companies inside of China, but all of their exports. Who are they affecting here? Because a lot of companies get stuff made inside of China. They don't necessarily need to be a Chinese company. And then we have another factor here with Apple. And they're saying, in this case, they started assembling iPhone 14 models in India. Now, this is from a little while ago, but it just shows us that they are trying to actively move away from China, at least for a percentage of their total manufacturing. That was the manufacturing um, aspect of this. But we need to understand how that connects in. Look, Beijing grinds to a near halt as China's capital city battles with more lockdowns. You constantly hear someone going into lockdown and you have this constant feeling that you're going to be next. And this is the type of thing that's happening today. And for some other countries, this felt like, you know, this was kind of two years ago, but it's still occurring inside China. China is a massive economy. It's the manufacturing center of the world. And if China slows down, the whole world does too. It comes at a time in which we have seen less stuff leaving China and as a result, less stuff being imported into the United States. In fact, there are no more cargo ships sitting and waiting off the coast of LA Long Beach anymore. That whole thing is gone now. You also have the demand that has waned when you look at, you know, comparing <clears throat> when you compare that to uh, just you know, what, what we saw before with Target and Walmart and, and so on, okay? So this is important. And that really brings me to what the response is. PBC, People's Bank of China, to cut required reserve ratio for financial institutions on December 5th, 2022. This comes directly from the People's Bank of China government website. And that's why when you get to the money GPS, you always get the source directly, okay? You're not going to get just hearsay, although... Uh, most of the YouTubers out there, they just, you know, I guess you got to trust them because they don't show you their sources. But anyway, uh, everything is sourced, by the way, if you look in the description under sources. This right now, if you look at the weighted average RRR for financial institutions will be 7.8% after the cut. So less capital needs to be kept at the banks, which effectively allows these banks to loan out more cash less reserves required, more cash being lent out. It's effectively like stimulus. That's what they're trying to do right now today. China's reserve requirement ratio cut better late than never, set to release $70 billion worth to boost the economy. People's Bank of China confirmed a 0.25 percentage point reduction in the reserve requirement ratio on Friday. So this is what they were expecting in the fact that they need to do more stimulus. They've been doing this for a little while. And so they are kind of the opposite of other countries. This is just a chart that corresponds to that. It depends on, you know, the big banks, small banks, rural, commercial banks, all depends on the those situations. But as they said, it's um, coming down. And that's the whole point. See, over the last few years, this has been declining, declining, declining. They're trying to stimulate, trying their best to stimulate. They're doing every possible measure. But what are the other countries doing? What are they trying to accomplish right now? Well, if you look at some of these other countries, they're tightening. They're actively engaging in a tightening policy, quantitative tightening. They're increasing their interest rates. But you look at what China's doing, and it seems like they're the complete 180, the complete opposite. Isn't it strange that they have had, since really the start of 2020, the exact opposite of what's occurring with most countries around the world? It's unusual, to say the least. Here we have it. I want to show you the producer price index in China. So imagine the, you know, if the... 
they're uh, trying to manufacture something inside of China and they need steel, but the steel is more expensive. Well, that's going to affect the producer price index. If they're making wood products, if they're making textiles like clothing, all of these things will be reflected in the producer price index. And that means it's going to reflect in the actual price of the products. Okay, so we would see that. So this actually happens to be declining month after month after month. Okay, it's been doing this basically all of 22 and even I believe into, uh, from starting from late last year. So this has been coming down currently at 6.1% and it just shows us that in general, as I have said, the numbers that we get reported, even if, you know, whether they're coming out of China, whether we're looking at like in the United States, the CPI, for instance, all of these numbers, they're going to come down. I've been talking, telling you this for months and it looks like that's the case right now. It's going to come down. Now, not real inflation, of course, but, uh, you know, we can see these statistics and we can look at them because they are important. They're important in their own way. Not you as the individual and what you have to pay at the store and things, but it is important because the companies look at this data and then they're going to be hiring or more likely firing uh, based on this. So it is important. Okay, and that's why people do not understand. They only want to look at the shadow stats and, and this and that, but companies are trading, companies are moving based on the fake data. So we do have to pay attention to it. French shipping giant delivers gloomy outlook after hefty profit. A lot of these companies, they did so well from 2020 into 2021, and now 22, things are really changing for them. This is just one of the companies. Maersk had something similar to say, this is looking terrible. Oh my goodness, it was kind of uh, real freaky what they were saying. And you can see the container rates that have dropped considerably over the last while. Uh, one of those routes is, um, you know, Shanghai to LA, which is the most popular. Uh, and that one uh, had a major, major change over the last couple of years. Okay, so it was at a rate we had never seen before. And now suddenly it's become much more reasonable. This is a good thing, not for the container companies, okay, that were making an arm, you know, <coughs> charging an arm and a leg excuse me, charging an arm and a leg, but actually being able to now come down back down to earth. The last point I want to make here, clothing piles up at Bangladesh warehouse as West cuts imports. So you can see what's going on as it relates to the imports and exports to understand how the global economy is operating. It's very clear when you see this. It's not just this one factor, but you look at the container rates, you see what's happening with the imports and the exports, and you can start to piece it all together. In addition to what I told you about Walmart and Target and all of these other retailers that have basically said, okay, we have enough stuff now, no more, thank you very much. That gives us a little bit of insight as to what's happening on a global scale. And that is a weakening that's occurring along with the tightening. Now, can China rescue the entire world? I'm not so sure that's going to happen. But if you look at it, I think it is pretty obvious that we have seen a slowdown, a considerable one, in fact. And um, what we get into next year, if as long as there's higher interest rates, that will be the continuing uh, scenario of slower growth, of actual slowdown and more layoffs. It doesn't necessarily need to cascade into a global financial crisis, but this is where we are at today. And I wanted to bring that to you. I hope you appreciate it. If you did, you got to hit that subscribe button and I'll bring you another good video tomorrow. Take care.